you know, we had our, in the UAW, we had our first direct election, which really resulted in a, a big shift in leadership, a shift in philosophy. And I just think, you know, um, you know, throughout my campaign, I, I stated that I believe, you know, bargaining and organizing go hand in hand. And um, so I think it's it's a few things. I think, we, you know, we bargained a record contract in the big three that gave us a lot of momentum. Uh, workers all over the country were really looking at that and non-union workers. And so, you know, as we were bargaining and we were getting results, literally thousands of non-union workers started sending in cards. And um, but I think the other part of this is just where we are not just in America, but globally uh, with working class people. Um, you know, in America, we went through a recession in 2008, 2009, and um, had the, you know, the pandemic, you know, global pandemic in 2020. And I think the pandemic really made people sit back and reflect on what's important in life. And, and we've seen this mass wealth and equality continue to grow. And, you know, the, there's the, the few at the top are taking all the profits that are generated by the workers. and workers are being left behind. So I, I just believe, you know, all those factors have played into where we are currently. And I think that's all giving workers, uh, you know, uh, a lot more of a reason to to want to find a better way for themselves to have a better life. Yeah. Well, then how do you actually do it as a UAW? You know, I ran on a platform of change and things. I mean, I was a frustrated member for the first 29 years of my career. It didn't feel like our leadership really pushed hard enough. And um, uh, so, you know, uh, when I came in, I, uh, I, brought in some some people outside of the UAW uh, on my team to uh, look at things with a different set of eyes um, just because you know in our union we've all been ingrained uh, to do things a certain way throughout our careers and so I really thought it was important to bring in some outside people to look at things with a fresh perspective and then combine that with those of us that have been there and know how things work and uh, you know really we've revamped our our communications team I would put up against anywhere I mean they We've done a phenomenal job of messaging, getting out in front of the companies and getting the message out there and, and setting the standard, not letting the companies do all the talking and just sitting back and reacting is what we used to do. So you know, we've re revamped how we how we communicate, uh, you know, doing uh, social media, Facebook lives, interacting with members, um, engaging the public. And, um, you know, then we've, uh, you know, brought in a new lead for our organizing team and, um, uh, you know, a new strategist and really have been strategizing on how we want to approach these things. And I just think when you combine all that with the knowledge we already had internally and just learning from past mistakes, what hasn't worked, um, you know, I think all those things played into this. And um, uh, so, you know, and we're seeing the results of that. I mean, with our big three contract, with our Daimler truck contract was, a, again, a record contract, um, life changing contract for a lot of workers. Um, we saw with the Volkswagen drive and uh, we're seeing that continue with organizing right now. So more and more people are signing up and, you know, we'll be announcing some more drives coming up here real soon. Do you have one more question coming off the back of what you said about changing the way you work and, you know, lessons from the past and changing what didn't work and then changing the communication. Also coming off the back of the hugely disappointing Mercedes election. I mean, yeah. more so for the workers, of course, than yeah. for us, but it yeah. really was gut wrenching to yeah. see it. Um, so, but faced with the union busting and the, I'm not, well, in some ways disinformation and also no directly strong tradition of union work in the US, how do you, how do you go about to reach people given that climate? You know, it's interesting in America when you, uh, you know, polling's been done consistently for decades and it always, it's always the same. 60 million Americans say they would join a union if they had the opportunity. And when we did polling in Alabama, just a, a general poll of the state and Tennessee also, it was two to one people saying that they would join a union. But when you look at when we have elections, it doesn't always translate that way. And, and I think it shows the immense power um, where these companies run, you know, they bring in outside anti-union avoidance firms that come in and run massive campaigns. They have, they get government politicians to get involved and. You know, and it's all about power. It's all about the money, and uh, they throw, you know, they throw, you know, millions and billions of dollars behind trying to convince workers they don't need a union because they're wanting to keep that system of control. And, and um, um, I, I do believe, though, the Volkswagen model showed us. I mean, uh, the companies have made these promises before, and the Volkswagen workers, you know, knew better, and uh, that's why we saw a 73% uh, uh, vote in favor of the union and. 
I really believe, I think the Mercedes, but we had one. I just think the company did some very, so they broke the law, number one, uh, and violated many uh, uh, rules that are in place. And, um, you know, we're going to contest that. And um, still, 300 votes would have made a difference if, and, and, you know, 300 workers voted the other way, uh, they would have won that election. So we're, we're going to, we're going to, we're not going to drop it. We're going to win there. Um, and uh, I don't think it discourages anyone. I think workers want to be a part of something bigger. They want to be a part of something better. And the only way they get power is by organizing because without any in America without a union you're an employee at will and you have no rights and uh, the company has all the control so so uh, we're going to continue to see that shift and uh, it's a bump in the road the Mercedes effort was um, uh, we're going to continue to have success continue to grow and um, I'm, I'm looking forward to what's coming.